Hello, my name is Jeff Butterworth. I am the founder of Alien Skin Software, and today I'm going to be talking about doing non-destructive editing using the eye candy filters. Um, what I'm going to talk about really just applies to Photoshop and Photoshop Elements, not other image editors. Okay, let's take a look at a file I've got here. This is a logo that a friend made for a t-shirt. I grabbed it for this test. Um, this is a pretty typical situation for applying eye candy filters. We've got an object in a layer with transparency around it. Um, logos and, and big text are, are particularly good candidates for eye candy. So to start off, I've got the eye candy panel here in the upper right. This is, uh, you can really just use this in Photoshop. And uh, we've, we've got other getting started videos that talk about the panel, but you could also start eye candy from the filter menu. Okay, let's start by applying wood. So we just go up here and click on wood. Great, I think that's cherry. That looks pretty good. All right, let's go back down here to the layers palette and take a look at what happened. Um, all of the eye candy factory settings are set up so that um, they will put their output in a new layer above your original layer. So here, we can just turn that off. You can see we've still got the original artwork. So that's a pretty simple and powerful way to do non-destructive editing. If I don't like this layer, I can easily throw it away and start again. Um, I don't have to restore the file to go get my original artwork. So I am going to throw it away. So that was, that was a pretty easy way to do non-destructive editing, but now I'm going to show you something a bit more sophisticated. Um, I think that the following just applies to Photoshop. If you right-click on a layer, you can convert to Smart Object. Now initially you don't see anything happened other than the, the layer icon changed, uh, but now a lot of operations that you do um, are going to be editable and you can undo them really easily. And uh, in particular, all of the eye candy filters work as smart filters when applied to smart objects. So let's apply wood again. So just click on wood. All right, that looks fine. Click OK. Now the difference from last time, take a look at the layers palette here. We don't have a new layer. What we have is a list of smart filters underneath this smart object. And you can see there's wood. You can do things like turn it off, bring it back, and even more importantly, this is the great part, you can double click it and now we could go edit the wood parameters. So let's switch it to something else. There's another version of Cherry or let's go over to the settings tour and go to Walnut. Great. So what is really handy here, it may have looked really simple, but I didn't have to go get my original artwork and start again. Um, I just opened up the wood filter, changed the parameters, and Photoshop reran the filter. All right, let's go a little further. You can apply multiple effects. I'm going to go over to the text and selection group here in the eye candy startup panel. And let's go up to the extrude filter and make this look thick. All right. And let's add another one. Let's add a perspective shadow. All right, the, this uh, default here for perspective shadow is just a drop shadow. So all, all that looks kind of interesting, but that's not really exactly the effects that I wanted. Um, the great thing is that now I can edit it. Let's go edit some of these effects. Here's double click on extrude here in the layers palette. I'll turn off the tapering change the extrude direction, change the light direction. I'm just demonstrating that you can edit the effect after you've created it. All right, let's change the shadow. The drop shadow is pretty boring. Let's do a perspective shadow. So I'm going to go over to the settings tab and go to just one of our settings tour settings. Let's go for one that's meant for a square selection. All right, that looks pretty good. But I want to edit that. Let me move the shadow around a little bit here. Just grab the corners of it and go over to the basic tab. Let me fiddle with 
perspective blurring, make it fade out a little bit more. All right, so the beauty of all that was that I could go change the, the parameters of all of those filters after I had uh, applied them. And I could even do something like turn off a filter in the middle of this stack, like turn off the extrude, then Photoshop knows to rerun wood and then run perspective shadow. So pretty powerful stuff. Let me give it a white background just so you can see things a little clearer. So those are the, the two big techniques for doing non-destructive editing. Um, with normal layers, um, iCandy will put its output on a new layer. And with smart objects, iCandy will act as a smart filter. And you can edit its parameters later. That's it.